Welcome to Everyday Spirituality, a podcast by Connect.Faith. You're listening to a podcast in our Young Leader series, where we'll hear from young activists who decided to take action in their communities following the death of George Floyd. In this series, you'll hear how and why these young leaders got involved in combating racial injustice. We hope you enjoy. My name is Callie Broncoma, and I'm talking today with Kyla Mary Angeline and Jada Milan Parker, two young activists from the Trenton, New Jersey area. So first I wanna say thank you both for being here today. And um, let's go ahead and start. Can you guys give us an introduction into the activism that y'all have been engaging with the last few months? I'm Kyla, and we kind of started right after, you know, George Floyd. Um, that was a really intense time, as I'm sure most people remember. Uh, that week was a hard week in general. Like for when George Floyd, um, when the video came out, um, I had it on my phone and I just couldn't watch it at first. And then of course people were posting it. Um, so then it just kind of like, as third, I think Thursday night was the night that mm -hmm. everything went up in flames. Um, I couldn't sleep that night. I woke up. And I was just looking like we were both like looking like what if, what can you like New Jersey do, let alone Trenton, New Jersey. We are the capital people like to forget that a lot. So I was just expecting more. And I honestly haven't talked or seen Kyla since graduation. Mm -hmm. So um, the fact that she like commented on my story post and was like, let's do a protest. And I, I've never been to a protest. I've never organized one. So um, I was just kind of like, are you sure we can do this? And she's like, yeah. Um, and so from there, we basically decided, you know, we haven't seen any information about protests going on here. So let's organize one ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we reached out to our other friend, Kayla, and the three of us put together our first protest that all of us have ever organized yeah. uh, in downtown Trenton, New Jersey. And there was an amazing turnout, like 1,500 people. Um, and it, it just made a really powerful impact. And so from there, we kind of just decided to keep the energy going and and as things went on we realized what we needed to do you know next and then next and now we have a pretty solid group and it, it's going really well so the next week i was like um i watched my siblings kind of deal with this like um pain too as well like you know because it's not just adults it's the, the black children that are still feeling this and they're in the their generation is based around social media so they see everything just as much mm -hmm. as us so our next move um i wanted to gear it around the youth and um that's where we started in our high school and it was just basically supposed to be a safe place for the youth to be able to mourn and get their um feelings across because for us i felt like the protest was a way for us to mourn and express the way we felt about what was going on i'm really fascinated by the fact that Kyla mentioned this is the first protest you ever organized and then Jada for you the first one you've ever been to even. So how did you go about organizing? Did you have um, like a nonprofit organization that you were looking to for help? Did you just have supportive community members or community organizations you're going off of? Or was it kind of just let's go and see what happens? I was actually mentored by a man um, named Mr. Darren Freedom Green. He's um, basically a community organizer in Trenton. Um, and he came to our high school, I wanna say my junior year when we were learning about college and he kind of motivated me to like, listen, even though you feel like you might not be good enough to do something, you're always gonna be good enough to do it. Mm -hmm. So when I've had my doubts about the protest, I was like, well, that's the only like he's like the per perfect person to reach out to. And I wanted to, you know, have him involved. But his main thing was, listen, like, I'll be support. I'll be in the background, but I want you to do it. And I want you to do it yourself. And he kind of motivated me and he got up there and he walked with us. So um, and then Kyla, you can bounce off of this. A lot of people as we were marching was like, what organization are you guys with? And um, we got up there in front of all 15,000 people and we were like, we're just three just black three girls, girls. <laughs> and like, like we have no, we're not tied to anything. For me, I mean, I went to uh, St. John's University in Queens and there were always protests. I mean, New York City, of course, there's always protests about things going on, social issues, but even on campus, um, when there were issues among just like students or administration on campus, there were always protests and, you know, the students weren't afraid to just get out and gather, leave class, like whatever they had to do. And it's, it's inspiring. I almost didn't 
realize how much of an impact that environment made on made on me until until this protest because I didn't realize um, you know how many people had never like Jada said had never been to yeah, a protest been. or anything. It was kind of something that seemed like regular to me at that point. Mm -hmm. So you know, and it's our constitutional right, like First Amendment. You have the right to gather peaceful assembly. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the exact wording, but it's in the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Um, you know, once we had, you know, a plan, we wanted to kind of make sure it was going to be peaceful because of the energy of what was going on. So mm -hmm. we kind of had, you know, some type of schedule. So there wasn't just like, you know, open air time for people when to When we just got be. there, I think people kind of like stepped up and helped us. Like yeah. beforehand, we didn't have, but we had like a lot of clergy members and we mm -hmm. actually had a, vet, a army veteran who we've never met before meet us there and walk on the front lines with us as kind of like support. And like, mm -hmm. he was just on all hands on deck from like, yeah. they were there 30 minutes. People were bringing we cases of water. Yeah, that we like, didn't even people reach wanted out to. to help. People mm -hmm. that weren't able to attend because we're also in a pandemic yeah. still. So the people that weren't able to attend were reaching out like, I want to donate this. Where can I bring it to? Mm -hmm. do, do you need money, do, like monetary donations? Like, where can we bring that to? Mm -hmm. um, so it's very much the community was behind us. All, all we did really was make a plan and make a flyer yeah. and, and find the location. Yeah. And so once we did that, um, you know, people, the energy was there. So people were ready to show up and to be a part and help. And I'm really grateful for that yeah. as well. I want to go back to... Um, the second protest that you guys held that Jada mentioned where, you know, you had this first really successful, very large protest, and then you thought, you know, let's bring it down so that everyone can, can participate, especially children and youth who often don't have an outlet for their voice. So can you talk, I, I happen to know that it was held at, at a local high school, right? Is that right? Oh. Lawrence yes. High School, the high school we graduated from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what what went behind the decision to hold, actually hold it at the high school? And was there a difference in atmosphere between the one kind of targeted more towards adults and the one targeted more towards children and youth? The high school for us was important because after the Trenton protest, a lot of people thought we were specifically from Trenton and Trenton obviously got put on the map, but um, I felt like for the second time around, not only did we want to put on for where we went to school, but um, we wanted to tell people like, listen, we're, we're from Lawrenceville. We both went to mm -hmm. the same school. And even though Lawrence particularly um, has a so-called, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, diverse, um, mm -hmm. like that people, when they think of people in Lawrence, they think diverse, but um, unfortunately in Lawrence, a lot of our minority groups are still treated just as worse or as bad as it would be if they were in a less diverse school. Mm -hmm. um, me particularly, so Kyla, so is Kyla, um, mm -hmm. we've dealt with a lot of, um, issues Micro i would say microaggressions yes. um racism at this school so um all of the all of the issues you know all of the black students kind of and minority students kind of all hang out in one group and we know between us that what we dealt with at growing up in lawrence high school but i don't think the town as a whole knew what we were uh, dealing with and i felt like it was important for us to show like not only do students like five, six years ago when we graduate had issues, but now to this day, um, the students still there have issues as well. Um, and they want, they wanted to be heard. And I feel like it had a whole different vibe because um, we were on streets that we grew up on. Like we, they, we told people we were only going to be at Lawrence High School. But because that's plan, what the township police yeah. told us that we were allowed, we, that we were allowed to do. Yeah. So <laughs> they, told us, they basically kind of tried to scare tactic us into staying at the high school and not marching. But mm -hmm. the biggest part of like marching was so that you can like feel what we felt like George Floyd, his head was on the ground. His head was in the pavement of mm -hmm. the street. So we wanted people to really kneel down. Like every intersection that we stopped at on our march, we had people kneel so that mm -hmm. people could feel like if your knee is hurting on this hot pavement, mm -hmm. imagine what it felt like at, with your head and your neck. So 
it was just like really symbolic um, because these are the streets that we grew up on. These are the st streets that students are being, um, you know, pulled over and targeted by the police officers mm -hmm. in our own county. So it, it hit kind of more close to their home because these were our streets rather than in Trenton. They were, it's like, you know, the state it's the, building. It's the capital. It's the capital. You know? But when we did it at home for the kids, it felt a little bit more emotional to me, I would think. Did, like, mm -hmm. is that how you felt? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, also on another level, like when you think of protests, like like the capital of New Jersey, you would protest there. Mm -hmm. Like protests happen there often. But um, I think another level of this was we want to protest everywhere. Like every community needs to be a part of this change mm -hmm. and needs to recognize like their own role and and how to end, how to be a better community to to all groups of people. So for mm -hmm. me doing a protest in Lawrenceville, I don't know, I've never heard of any, or I don't know that they have, they have ever done a protest in mm -hmm. Lawrenceville before yeah. ever, especially not the size um, and like the gravity of what we did. So for me, it was also just important, like, you know, we can, we can protest in the capital, but we can also protest in a suburban town. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like if you're really standing for something, it's within our right to stand for that wherever right. we want to, so. Right. Yeah, I, I love the idea of people expected at government buildings because that's that's an easy place to blame. But then, as you said, microaggressions happen everywhere and school systems are another system of power where um, things like this take place. So I, I think that's something that I haven't really thought about is where are we holding protests and, and what what is the logic behind that? Mm -hmm. um, what was, because you mentioned this protest was bringing it back to your hometown. It was about bringing it back to the community where you grew up um, and where the issues that you had to face growing up are still happening. Um, what was the reaction from the town? For me, it was eye-opening um, because I hadn't realized a lot of the people that came out, they brought their kids because it was for the youth. Um, so for me, I felt it was special to have to see so many young faces and to have them be able to experience this and know, like, you know, this is something you can do if, if something's going on that's, you know, a big enough issue that it's a nationwide thing. Like, this is what you can do to organize and gather. Um, but it also made me realize even a lot of adults, like one of my uh, teachers who was there, um, you know, pulled me aside and she was like, I'm really happy you did this. I've never, you know, done or seen anything like this before. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad I was able to bring my family there. Yeah. Um, so it had a lot of different purposes that I think were important. And yeah. um, on top of that, some of the issues we addressed were um, eye opening. It was eye opening to a lot of people. So it was it was a really impactful moment for for Lawrence Township on a lot of different yeah. levels. But for me, one of the best parts was because we marched down like the surrounding streets of the high school. Um, I was a little bit nervous at first because Lawrence has a diverse crowd. So when I'm saying diverse this time, I mean like a racist crowd and like <laughs> a very, very mm -hmm. liberal crowd. Mm -hmm. So going down these streets, I didn't know if people were gonna come out of their house and be aggressive or try and not let us walk down their street. But as we were walking down these streets, we had people come out and stand on their and porch clapping, and clap. And for holding us, signs holding from their up houses. Signs for the, Cause a lot of people didn't feel like comfortable to come. So the fact that we got to make a, like a loop around to people who didn't feel safe leaving their house because it was right smack dab in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, people did get a chance to witness the protests right from their house. So um, that alone was really special to me. Another moment I do want to highlight though is um, when we knelt uh, right in front of, there's like this little intersection around the corner from the school where there's like a pizza shop or a couple of pizza shops and like a little deli. Um, and this is a place where the students would gather after school and we had a moment where we all kneeled there mm -hmm. um, and said our chance. But um, for a lot of students that we found out like later in the summer as stories were still coming out and a lot of um, activism was still going on in regards to the school system specifically. But a lot of stories were coming out of uh, students experiencing racism and microaggressions just going into the these local place. shops. Yeah. yeah, so for us to be able to have the protests and be like gathered in that intersection where some of these places might not be on the same page as us, I right. think was also very important. Right. We did our march and then we stopped back 
at the school and we um, had an event or not an event, but we had a kind of like a little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We um, had uh, speakers. We had speakers yeah. and we had a little activity for the kids as well. Um, so we did the, I don't know if you've ever seen like the step forward, if you like cross the line, cross the line um, thing. So we did that, but we did it with hands because of social distancing. And we had um, our one friend that we graduated with um, put together a list of things that she dealt with or other people dealt with at Lawrence High. Um, Jada, can I ask you to just explain what cross the line is for anybody who doesn't know? Yeah, so the cross the line um, thing, it was from Challenge Day. Uh, it was a show back mm -hmm. in, it was on MTV. Yeah, yeah, it was they, a show. They did one at our school. Like, yeah, they, sophomore it year. came to our school sophomore year. Mm -hmm. um, and it was basically how to get everybody together by showing them like, um, like, for example, this is one of the things like um, step forward if They're you live with both parents in your household married. or take two steps forward if you grew up with a father figure in the home. Take two steps forward if you had access to a private education. Take two steps forward if you had access to a free tutor growing up. For the one that we did the high yeah. school, it was like, uh, raise your hand if you have experienced a microaggression in, in the classroom. <laughs> raise your hand if you had ISS mm -hmm. um, and like things like that will show the difference between you know a lot of minority students raising their hand mm -hmm. versus maybe some of their white peers right um, and so it was kind of like questions tailored towards that the main purpose is to show uh, the differences between um, you know whether it's minorities or white or religion or anything like that but also to show the similarities like mm -hmm. you know people might be dealing with things that you thought you were the only one going through that right. you felt you had to hide or right. something like that so it's a really powerful activity especially for um you know for youth and young adults who are you know go going through yeah. things or trying to you know just learn how to find their way for me like what it was kind of like the questions hit home because the questions were um, step four or, or raise your hand if your guidance counselor told you that you wouldn't be able to get into the school that you wanted to get into and the guidance counselors are you, standing every, in the every crowd. Every black student raised you know, their hand. Like the guidance one. counselors are right there. Raise your hand if you've ever been um, targeted by your locals or your school administrator and all the kids mm -hmm. raising their hands and their administrators are standing right there with them and then turning around and seeing that all the students that raised their hands were of color. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it was an eye opener for the principal, it was an eye opener for mm -hmm. parents, and it was an eye opener for kids as for well. For fellow students. Yeah, well, so yeah. It, it, it hit home. Um, and then I would say like a lot of the students after, um, they just, it was kind of like a weird silence after because you know people felt like people really felt it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Um, I like that game because it. We did it at the camp that Kyla and I worked at, mm -hmm. um, and it to me it, it takes things out of statistics because you can read as many statistics as you want, and puts a face to it, and it makes it so much more humanizing. This has been Everyday Spirituality, a podcast with Connect.Faith. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah.